Hi YouTube, Darth here. It's been a productive week on the community test environment for Battlefield 4 and I've got a couple of neat things to show you this week. There's some fun stuff and some serious stuff that has landed on the CTE this week and I'm going to run you through all the week's changes in this update. So I think you're going to hear a lot of folks proclaiming the SRA to be dead after the CTE changes this week. I'm not one of them. So here it is, the SRA has had its turning radius reduced, its range reduced, its splash damage has decreased, and its designated damage is reduced. However, the size of the inner splash radius has increased. Yes, it's a nerf, but this means that what was once the most effective rocket weapon in the game is no longer the best at every roll. The weapon still turns with enough speed to be adjusted for hitting slow moving targets at range. This makes the SRA a great weapon against tanks and other vehicles. It's still possible to use it against helicopters if they aren't moving rapidly, but with the physics changes to the helicopters on the CTE, you're going to have a hard time hitting quickly moving aircraft. So is it dead? No, and this is a good change. The SRA is now fitting its more intended role of a surface to surface missile than a dual role. In the live game, a lot of players who are great at the SRA never have to make a trade off of whether to use an anti air rocket or an anti ground rocket. It was even great at killing infantry. You can still do all these things, but it's no longer the go to engineer rocket. I consider this a necessary part of making the attack helicopter relevant on the battlefield, and I I also think this is a necessary component of providing the engineer with meaningful choices. But definitely let me know in the comments below how you feel about this SRAW change. The overhaul in the air continues and stealth jets saw some significant changes this week to their weaponry. Now the different cannons do a normalized amount of damage versus other jets, but have specialized roles that they can fulfill as well. The 20mm cannons have been redesigned to have a multiplier against helicopters, the 25mm cannons have been given splash damage to best infantry, and the 30mm cannons are the most effective against unarmored vehicles. DICE has also fixed a bug so that the autoloader for jets now functions on all stealth jet cannon types. After trying out the new changes a little bit, I have to say that the change I noticed the most was the 30mm even against armored targets. For the most part, on live, the cannons on the stealth jet merely tickle tanks and IFVs. On the CTE, I feel like it could make a few good passes on a tank and probably kill it. Another change to stealth jets was a slight modification to the nose up and down speed. Now my assumption here is that this change is being made to discourage air combat maneuvering from devolving into the circle of death. That's where two aircraft merely circle each other until one hits the ground or leaves the circle. To this and DICE has also further modified the now limited afterburners to burn slightly longer, but also stay on cooldown for longer once the afterburners have expired. I have to say that the more I play with the new maneuvering system, the more adjusted I get to it, and it seems like air combat is moving in the right direction. Though it feels like it's going to take forever to get adjusted to the new paradigm where 313 knots is no longer king. Finally, the JDAM was given a boost and now has a higher gravity and higher top speed. This means that it is more likely to hit a target that you're aiming at. One other change is that it now only stocks a single bomb instead of two, but reloads faster. On live, the JDAM is definitely not my favorite in the attack jet, but I may have to give it a second look after the CTE changes this week. This last week, there have been some pretty significant changes to helicopters, and in particular attack helicopters. The first thing you'll notice is that attack helicopters no longer fire from dual launchers, but from a single unified launcher that resupplies faster. In the firepower department, all attack helicopter rockets have had their range reduced and their damage reduced, which is a change you'll definitely notice if you try attacking any target on the CTE. Smart missiles have been made partly smarter and now act more like the law in that they lock on from a further distance. The secondary gunner position has had its maximum range reduced to make the attack helicopter's range equivalent to the range of the mobile anti-aircraft. There was also a change to the TV missiles, which I'll get to in the next section, but the relevance to helicopters is that the range reduction removes the ability to snipe from outside the range of the mobile anti-aircraft. Finally, for scout helicopters, the miniguns should now be much more accurate with the predictive sights in the helicopter. DICE has made some modifications to the underlying logic that will allow them to be more in line with the reticule. As I said earlier, TV missiles have seen some changes in the community test environment. Particularly, they have had their range, maneuverability, and damage reduced. Keep in mind that this is a first pass on TV missiles and does not represent the final destination for their changes. According to the patch notes, DICE intends to introduce a skill-based mechanic where the impact location of a missile will matter, likely increasing its lethality once more. But those aren't the only changes, as the restocking logic of the TV missile has also been modified to reduce the burstiness of the missile's damage from the attack helicopter. Now you'll reload missiles faster, but you won't be able to fire immediate follow-on shots in quick succession. You'll also notice that the flicker on the missile's camera has been fixed. Pretty much since launch, the TV missile has had a broken HUD, and DICE has finally addressed that issue in this update. In addition to the balance changes, a lot of work was added this week where DICE aligned launchers and cameras across aircraft, so hopefully no more surprise exploding the moment that you launch the weapon. 
Just make sure to aim correctly. Dice has been really active this week and the gifts just keep coming. In its continuing tradition of holiday surprises, DICE has added Christmas-themed Easter eggs to the CTE. For starters, the ammo and health kits were carefully gift-wrapped. But they aren't the only presents, as DICE has finally fixed the naming bug on the C4 gadget and corrected them to their proper name of Jeep Stuff. I certainly had a lot of fun hand-delivering presents this week and on the new and improved snowmobile. DICE didn't stop there, though, as they fixed head glitching once and for all. Now all characters have festively appropriate domes. All joking aside, this is probably the first time in Battlefield 4 that the character classes have actually had distinct silhouettes at range. And like I said earlier, just don't expect to be hiding behind any crates. Finally, the night skies turned to dusk on Operation Hammerhead. At first I was really surprised, but after I figured it out, it took about two seconds, this seems like another nod towards DICE working on night maps. It definitely seems like an interesting way to put a spin on a map, and I'm hoping we see more of this feature in the future. As with all easter eggs, keep in mind that these changes are limited to the CTE, so if you have access to the CTE, be sure to check them out before they leave. With every week, there are a few iterative changes that are pretty small but welcome anyways. This week in tweaks, the Soldier Optic option now includes a preview when tweaking color audio issues with the CS5, UTS-15, and shotguns were fixed. A number of levels had collision objects fixed, in addition to a number of other bug fixes including a fix to the endless black loading screen. That's it for this week's changes on the CTE. Do you like the changes that are coming this week? Yes? No? In either case, let me know what you think of the changes in the comments below. And keep in mind that many things on the CTE are still a prototype, so definitely get in and play with an open mind. The developers need your feedback on the official forums, and I'll leave a link below to the community test environment if you're interested in signing up and if you have premium. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like before you go. If you're new around here, take a look at my channel and please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, YouTube. Merry Christmas!